Good morning, Year 10. I hope you're well and having a lovely day. This is Mr. Sousa welcoming you to today's lesson. So for your do now, what I'd like you to do is write down the names of any poems from your study this term that explore the importance of time. So we've looked at quite a few, but hopefully they, um, they will stand out in your mind and you can remember the ones that explored time. If not, if you're really stuck, flip back through your books and jot down some ideas. And for at least one of these poems, I'd like you to write down any quotations you can remember. Once again, if you're really stuck with the second part, feel free to flick back through your book and jot down some keywords or phrases from the poems that explore time. So please pause the video to do that now. So you may have chosen now, focusing on making the perfect present. You may have chosen love and friendship. Seasons pass and love seen as temporary, December blights thy brow, or you may have chosen a broken appointment. Marching time drew on, focusing on the idea of waiting for a lover. So if you didn't get these, please could you write them down in your books now. Okay, so your title today is Poetry Part A, comparing a known poem with an unseen poem. Please could you put the date and title on this title in your exercise book. You also need to stick in your copy of the new Unseen poem to annotate around and if you would like you can print out another copy of the poem that you're familiar with now and put it alongside the new poem. You don't have to do this but I would strongly recommend that you do it as it will help make the process of comparison a lot easier. So for this lesson you will need a printout of the poems that you could annotate like I said, you don't necessarily need the new poem, but it'd be very good if you could have both of them. You need a pencil for first thoughts and ideas, and different coloured pens or highlighters. Okay, so I would like you to spend five minutes writing down the key information that I'm going to give you now. So we're not going to be looking at a new poetry today, you may be pleased to hear, or disappointed if you're enjoying it. We're going to be looking and um, thinking about the exam how it works and how it is structured and how you'll structure your answers. Okay, so poetry is part of the second exam paper you will sit for English literature. So as you've mentioned before, there are two exam papers for both English language and English literature and both exam papers have two parts. So um, paper one for English literature as you know, has half of it on Jekyll and Hyde and half of it on Inspector Calls. Jekyll and Hyde is an either or, you choose one question to answer. Inspector Calls um, has two parts which you need to answer. So paper two um, of English literature is your Shakespeare, so Romeo and Juliet, which we'll be doing together. I'm sure you're very excited about when you come back in September um, for year 11 and um, the other part of it is poetry, which of course we're doing now. So section A of poetry works in the same way as section A in paper one, which is Inspector Calls. So part A is comparison of a known text with an unseen text, 45 minutes, 20 marks. And part B is write about another moment, or in this case poem, from a known text from memory. So 30 minutes, 20 marks. So the structure is the same. You've got two parts of the question. Firstly, comparing um, with an unseen poem and then writing about another poem um, from memory. So a similar structure. This means you will have a poem you know next to a poem you don't know and you'll be asked to compare how something is presented in both poems. The 45 minutes should be 15 minutes planning to include reading and annotating both poems and 30 minutes writing the essay. So in the same way with Inspector Calls you had 10 to 15 minutes where you were annotating the known extract from Inspector Calls and the unknown extract from a different play, you're doing the same process um, with poetry in paper two. Okay, so for the unseen poem, you need to work through the same stages we have been using while introducing you to the anthology poems. Five minutes to take notes on this key information, please, and add it to your exercise book. So first reading, you need to get a gist and the feel of the poem. So consider the title 
who's speaking? What's the purpose of this poem? Again, just getting to grips with it and getting a feel for it. Then you have your second reading. So this is where you um, read it in a bit more detail and think about specific things such as their situation, the tone of the poem, language and structure, devices, um, the form of the poem. So this is where you kind of zoom in in a bit more detail. And the third reading is where I normally step in and give you some detailed notes. But this time it's for looking to make connections with the other text. So have they used the same devices but for different effects? Have they achieved the same effects but used different devices? Do they present a similar viewpoint or is it completely different? So you're looking for similarities and differences between the two texts. So let's put this into practice, looking at um, a part A poetry question. So you've got three minutes admin time to make sure you have got a copy of both of these poems. Now by Robert Browning, The Known Poem and Hour by Caroline Duffy, The Unseen Poem. Like I said before, you don't necessarily need to print out a new version of now. You can just flip back in your book. Um, but I would suggest having a new version so you can put them side by side. It would just make things a little bit easier for you. Um, so you will also need to write down this question as a new subheading. Compare how the poets present feelings of happiness in a relationship. So pause the video, please, to make sure you've got everything you need to move on. So you need to compare how the poets present feelings of happiness in a relationship. I would like you to start by focusing on the poem you know. And I'm going to give you five minutes to do this. You don't need the process of first and second readings for this one because you know it already. What I would like you to do is read through it and pick out anything you might comment on that relates to the question. So how does Browning show that he's happy in this relationship? So these are some ideas. Um, if you haven't got any of these down, um, please could you make sure you've written them down into your book. So you've got alliteration of perfect the present, perfect the present, sorry, rapture of rage, merged in a moment. So this emphasis on this condensed and perfect singular moment of time where happiness is extreme also seen in the word ecstasy so you can definitely do some close analysis or one word analysis on the word ecstasy which is the most extreme form of happiness the form of happiness you'll feel when you return to school i'm sure so but also past and future is ignored to focus on the present moment the happiness in being together you've also got the sonnet form being used which is traditional for love poetry You've got exclamations and dashes showing delight. Ah, sweet. You've got ensemble, you know, the flowing of one line onto another without any sort of end stopping. And you've got listing. Both of these show a rush of emotions. There's also a focus on physical intimacy and the importance of that. So lips meet. And you've also got moment eternal. Two words which seem to say the opposite. This oxymoron shows his desire for this short moment in time to last an eternity because he is um he feels it to be the epitome of happiness so please make sure you've got those notes written down now let's look at the next poem hour by my all-time favorite poet carol ann duffy we'll be looking at one of her poems later on um in this term so something to look forward to there i'm can almost guarantee you'll like it so Think about the new poem. Spend five minutes doing this. First of all, make sure you read it through once to get the gist for it. What's it about? How does the speaker feel? Read through and pick out anything you might comment on that relates to the question. How does Duffy show that she's happy in this relationship? So pause the video for five minutes to do that now. So these are some ideas you may have written down. You've got focus on words of value, such as rich, coin, millionaires, etc., to show that love brings metaphorical wealth. You've got references to physical intimacy. The time feels longer. For thousands of seconds we kiss. Time slows. You've got allusions to fairy tale and myth. So Midas um, is from Greek mythology. He was a king and everything he touched turned to gold. Rumpelstilts Rumpelstiltskin 
is a weaver. So these references suggest that love is transformative, for instance, changing things to gold. You've also got um, sonnet form again, though it doesn't stick to the rules of it quite as much as the pre other poem, though it is a modern interpretation. And you've also got the concept of perfection with this person. No chandelier will see you better lit. So if you didn't get all of these written down, please could you take a moment to jot them down in your book. Okay, so once you're clear about your ideas for both poems, you need to start to plan your connections. So please pause the video for five minutes to make at least three connections between the poems. Okay, so I'll help you out here. Let's see if you got the same as me. Both of them are sonnets, though one's more traditional, one's a bit more, plays a bit more loosely with the form. Um, so you've got moment eternal, showing his desire for the short time to last forever, whereas so in one, he feels the moment is really, really brief um, because he wants it to last forever, but feels that it doesn't. By contrast, the other one, time feels really, really long. And so you've got that contrast with regards to how time feels. So per perfect the present concept of perfection. So in both poems, love is presented as making things perfect. And then you've got um, this idea of happiness or delight um, in now shown through exclamations and dashes in the other poem showing shown through words of value and finally um past and future ignored to focus on the present moment whereas the other one refers to things in the past or in myth so one grounded in reality um and the cruelty perhaps you could say of reality because it's so short and so fleeting whereas the other one is more romanticized through having these allusions to fairy tales and myth and this idea that this one beautiful moment can be drawn out quite a lot. So please make sure you've got this all written down. Once you have a plan, you need a clear argument. The best essays are great from the start. The student asserts a clear argument and is ready to convince the examiner to agree with them. It's important to think about what your opening will be. Often students get to the crux of their argument just as the essay finishes. If you're not sure, leave a space and go back to it. Your thinking might be clearer at the end. Try to write one sentence that sums up your argument for this essay. So this is a model answer. Um, the opening and conclusion comes from a genuine um, answer written by a year 10 student. So please read through it and if you want you can note down some key points. Okay let's turn one of my connected ideas into a comparative paragraph. So please could you pause the video to read through this if you would like, you can write it down in your book. Okay, so with the remaining lesson time, have a go at writing one comparative paragraph for this essay. Remember that the examiners are looking to see clear comparative points using comparative connectors. We've talked about these a lot. Evidence from both poems, terminology and one word analysis when exploring language and consideration of both language and structure with terminology and quotes and their effect. Please use the exemplar work to help you. Um, the link is on class charts. Don't forget to read the examiner commentary as well. So please pause the video to do that now. You've got 10 minutes. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Um, thank you very much for your hard work. I'm sorry I didn't read through every word on all the slides, but I'm capped at 15 minutes on YouTube haven't worked out how to override that quite yet. So that's why I couldn't read through um, every word on the, on the last few slides. But hopefully you got what you needed. You have a good understanding of what this exam entails. Your quiz will be based on your understanding of the exams and in particular the poetry. So please um, pop over to quizzes now to do that. Right, thank you once again for your hard work today and I'll see you next time.